This video is sponsored by Monday.com. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we've got some Lightroom updates that I want to share with you. Some exciting stuff today. Before we get going, I do want to mention that there are of course two versions of Lightroom and I've done this before in videos where I wasn't really specific and it becomes confusing. So I'm gonna be very specific today. We're talking about Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. Lightroom used to be Lightroom CC. It's been shortened up. It's essentially the cloud version of Lightroom. So I'll be very clear on which version we're talking about. Most updates apply to both, but the first one I want to talk about is M1 support. So if you're an Apple user, this applies to you and it applies to Lightroom Classic. So Lightroom Classic now has Apple M1 native support. Now, what does native support mean? Well, you might remember years and years ago when Apple transitioned from PowerPC to using Intel chips. Well, they've done it again most recently because they're going to be transitioning to their own silicon away from Intel. So what that means is when you're transitioning between chips, it means a lot of things need to be rewritten. So it's a hardware issue and it's a software issue. And the way it works is there's a transition period, which we're in right now, where there has to be some kind of translation software that runs under the hood. So applications that would run on Intel will run on the new M1 MacBooks. It will become much more efficient as soon as software starts to catch up and they have software that runs natively on M1. So that's what we have with Lightroom Classic now. Now, what does that mean to you? It means speed. Adobe have done some benchmark testing through a third party and they discovered that basic operations like importing, exporting images, cruising around in loop view, you're getting about a 40% increase in speed. Screen rendering of 61 megapixel images showed a performance increase of over two times faster and performing super resolution operations yielded performance times of over five times faster. Unfortunately, I don't have an M1 computer to test any of this on. I thought it was a little early to go down that road, but it looks like I'm gonna have to catch up because there could be some stuff to talk about here. So that is very exciting. Next up, and this applies to both Lightroom Classic and Lightroom, is we now have premium presets that come pre-installed. So you're going to find this over in the presets tab. There's some really interesting looks you can apply. These were done in collaboration with some creators that Adobe has worked with. I have to be honest, I'm a little bit biased because I have my own presets and I think they look pretty good and I would recommend those. But anyway, these are here. Next up is collaborative editing. Now this applies to Lightroom because you're going to need the cloud to connect with other people, but this is a very useful feature. So if you're in Lightroom, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on an image. You're going to select share and invite. This allows it to create a link and you're going to be able to invite somebody to actually collaborate on image editing. The way it's going to work is anytime somebody starts editing the image, it does create a new version. So you've got a version history. This is really cool if you work with other editors and you do any kind of collaborative work. So this is a very useful feature to have. Next up is a feature that's going to make you Nikon shooters very happy. And so this is available in Lightroom Classic and this is tethered live view for Nikon bodies. So this is not complete, but there is an extensive list. I'll put a link in the show description so you can see if your camera bodies on there. It does include most modern cameras, including all the mirrorless Z cameras. This will give you live view tethered shooting for Nikon. Next up, we have custom crop aspect ratios. This is new to Lightroom room, but we also have it in Lightroom Classic. So it's in both applications. So sometimes you want to do an arbitrary crop where you have it unlocked and you just crop it to taste. And other times you have to fit a specific aspect ratio. So if you're going out to video, you want something that's 16 by nine. If you're going to print, it might be a different aspect ratio than what the camera natively took it in. But we haven't had the ability in Lightroom to do specific custom aspect ratios. So if you want to do something weird, like, like 21.2 by 6.8, Go for it. It's now here. Crop away. This is actually something you'll use a lot if you're working with a printer, you're working with a publication, something like that. So it's really nice to have these in here now. So now I want to talk about our headline feature today, which is a little thing called Super Resolution. This is available in both Lightroom as well as Lightroom Classic. This was something that was introduced in Adobe Camera Raw fairly recently. Super Resolution allows you to take an image and essentially double the resolution on each side of the image. It's pretty amazing. Now this is something that back in the old days, if you ever tried to do this in Photoshop, you could only go about 10% bigger before you'd start to notice that image getting kind of muddy. Essentially, you're asking the software to create information that's not there. It's going to invent something as you increase the size of an image. Reducing size, not a problem. Increasing, well, if it doesn't know what's there, it's hard to do. Well, now we have AI built into the Adobe Creative Suite, so we have the ability 
to use artificial intelligence to make those guesses for us. And as we saw with Adobe Camera Raw, this is really good. And I want to show you some examples here. Before we get into this, though, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor real quick, who are the awesome folks over at Monday.com. Monday.com is an extremely flexible platform that allows anyone to create and customize the solutions that their team needs to run any aspect of their work. At the heart of Monday.com is WorkOS, which can adapt to many kinds of workflows for project management, marketing, sales, and CR and even software development. I've been using Monday.com for video production and it keeps everything clear. Work is out in the open, which creates a sense of trust and also accountability. I can realize problem areas really quickly and get them solved early. I've got an at-a-glance view of the workload and I can even track budgets and even equipment. I also love automations. So automations are customizable conditional rules that automate parts of your workflow. They assist accountability and they free up your time from repetitive management, which ultimately is going to allow you to be more creative and more productive. Integrations also make Monday.com more powerful as you can incorporate other services of your business that you might be using like Google Calendar, Dropbox, Adobe Creative Cloud, and many more. Monday.com is also collaborative. It provides an environment that's easy to adopt and it's enjoyable, it's engaging, and it's actually fun to use. So if you visit Monday.com using the link below this video, you can get a 28-day free trial and see if Monday.com is right for you. So check it out. And I want to give a special shout out and thanks to the awesome folks at Monday.com for sponsoring this video. Super resolution. So this is the ability to increase the size of your image, the resolution of the image, the effective megapixels from what your camera actually natively shot it at. Now, megapixels and resolution is a different argument for another video entirely because it's way beyond the subject to get into here, but there is an argument to it. Cameras nowadays are capable of 100 megapixels easily, 60 megapixels, 50 megapixels. It seems like 24 megapixels pixels is now kind of low resolution. I don't really believe that, but anyway, we'll debate that later. Anyway, what super resolution allows you to do is to take an image and you can increase the size, double the width and double the height of the image. So this is going to give you a lot of room to work with. This actually is very useful if you have an image that maybe you took on a phone that's only 12 megapixels. You did a crop on it. You want to get a nice print of it. You want to print it fairly large. Well, this may be your key. So to get to this, what you're going to do is select any image. You're going to right click and you're going to see an option for enhance. This is going to now have two things. You can enhance details in the raw file or we now have super resolution. So I'm going to select super resolution. The thing about this that's very impressive is this was in Adobe Camera Raw fairly recently. It was impressive. It feels a lot faster in Lightroom and I think they've done some modifications to get it there. So a 12 megapixel image is taking me about four seconds to render. A 24 megapixel image about nine seconds to render pretty consistently. How much resolution are we getting exactly? Exactly with this. Well, megapixels are calculated by multiplying the pixel width by the pixel height of an image. So if you have an image that's 4,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels, that's 24 million pixels. So we would call that a 24 megapixel image. I have found that when we increase the resolution, remember you're getting double the width, double the height, a 12 megapixel image becomes a 48 megapixel image. So there's a dramatic increase in resolution there. I have not compared this with Topaz or some of the other third-party plugins that or supposedly do a really nice job at this, but I'm really impressed with how Adobe handles this. And this gives you a lot of flexibility if you want to print, particularly if you're going to crop and you've just got a small image. So when you look at the detail view, I mean, you would never guess that this was enlarged and nothing super fuzzy. Uh, the grain is well maintained. The details are all there. This is just really an amazing thing that Adobe now offers you. What's really cool about this is it allows you to, if you have storage concerns and that's why you haven't moved to a large megapixel camera, it allows you to shoot something like 12 megapixels or 24 megapixels, and then when you actually do need it, you can just do it on an image by image basis. And this is gonna save you a lot of room in terms of storage and a lot of time because your files are bigger, they're gonna take longer to render and they're whatnot. But anyway, this is a really cool addition. It's something that I'm really excited to see in Lightroom. For you Mac users out there, I did run into a little problem where it would render it and then hang, and I would cancel it and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, I finally figured it out. You have to go into your permissions in your system preferences.
preferences and you actually have to assign permissions to Lightroom and I would also assign Photoshop while you're at it. Basically this allows both these applications full disk access and so what it was doing was it was making the file but it couldn't write it. I'm sure this is something that Adobe will probably fix with a warning that comes up or something later but if you're having trouble doing this that's the fix. This is an exciting time for image editors. We had the announcement recently that Capture One is going to have M1 native support on the Apple side and now we have that with Adobe as well in Lightroom Classic and so there's some really cool development going on. I think there's some great additions that Adobe has come out with today. I would love to know what you guys think so drop me a comment. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.